SpongeBob SquarePants really requires no introduction. He's the yellow square dude all of us, no matter our age or interest in cartoons, knows right from seeing anything related to the guy. Like if I ran a mile down the road and held up a piece of paper with SpongeBob on it, you'd know. SpongeBob cures <laughs> nearsightedness. SpongeBob SquarePants in its heyday was one of the most clever and genuinely hilarious cartoons of all time. And I watched the carp out of it when I was a kid. That was originally a typo, but the pun works, so hush your mouth. Point is, even if the newer seasons don't really hold up to most people, SpongeBob still holds a near and dear place in my heart and in the hearts of millions of children and adults all over the world. So you know how it goes. Massively successful cartoon, massive amounts of video games. And oh god, there are so many SpongeBob games it would make your head spin, your stomach turn, and your arms fall off. You know, most games based on kids' shows are rarely the best, especially in the era I grew up in. But did SpongeBob fare any better? Let's take a ferry across the Sea of Memories and find out. Sea of Memories. That sounds like some kind of like Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I'm writing that down. I'm writing that down right the fuck now. First up is actually a game that has a bit of a special milestone for me. Since I grew up in a PlayStation family, this was the first game I ever owned on a Nintendo platform. SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge for Game Boy Advance. Or just SpongeBob SquarePants. I didn't buy one of those bootleg cartridges, did I? Ah, uh, here we are. Alright, props for translating the French narrator's accent into text. So the plot is that Patrick's birthday is coming up, so SpongeBob wants to get something special from Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy for him. But Barnacle Boy, being the grumpy old man that he is, wants something in exchange and asks you to go get some sea nut butter, jelly, and... lettuce, so that Mermaid Man can make a sandwich. Well... Okay, sounds fair. I mean, lettuce on PB&J sounds fucking disgusting to me, but, you know, fair enough. I'll just head to the store, or jellyfish fields. What, am I gonna squeeze the jelly right out of the dangerous jellyfish? I feel like we haven't entirely thought this through, SpongeBob. Alright, so the graphics look pretty good. SpongeBob's animated well, and the backgrounds look now. <laughs> what is that? What is this worm? It's so gross! I don't remember it from the show. Is this kind of how the enemies are gonna be for this game? Well, let's keep playing. We got jellyfish, alright, that's fine. Poisonous coral, sure thing. Whoa! Slow your roll there, Jimbo Jones! Listen, I'm sorry, I know I killed him, but it had to be done, man. You saw how these guys just rush out with no regard to sponge kind? Let me tell you about joggers there for a second. You see, back in 1985, I'm, I'm sorry, I got distracted, because I feel like I'd be in the running for a Nobel Prize if I somehow managed to figure out what the fuck that is! Okay, okay, we've had our fun, but let's get real for a second. This game is terrible. And that really proves its point in the second stage. Fucking Sandy is all like, Howdy, SpongeBob! Oh, you wanna borrow some peanut butter? Sure thing, y'all! Just climb this fucking tree and go get it! Good luck, douchebag! Okay, first of all, SpongeBob, the idiot, forgot his water helmet, so he's gotta bathe in these friggin' dirty puddles to stay hydrated. Second of all, this level is one of those vertical climb levels where if you fall, <laughs> you fall. I mean, I get that a lot of games, even good games, have levels like this, but level two? Come on! And you will fall, because the controls are so slippery and floaty that centering your jumps is seriously just impossible. <laughs> okay, listen, I don't know why I'm using a bird's nest filled with eggs and a mother bird as a trampoline. But there's something really morbidly hilarious about it. Level 4 might be even worse, but for a different reason. It's just a straight line with the occasional tiny pit or an enemy. It's one of the laziest level designs I've ever seen. What the what? Did I just get hit by a snail ambulance? A snambulance? Why does the snambulance hurt me? Snambulances are supposed to help you. Also, I'd like to point out that this level comes directly after I risked my life on deadly hooks. For bread! Oh look, Shady Shoals Retirement Home. You know what, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, you old bastards? Make your own damn sandwich, I'm done with this. <sighs> Alright, so this is actually the GBA version of a game that was released on PlayStation. I've never played that one, but you know, I get that GBA versions, especially of licensed games, tend to be pretty inferior. 
So let's be a bit more fair and hop to a console and play SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman for PlayStation 2. <laughs> All right, so this is a bad start. This game is a technical nightmare right off the bat. Every time this game loads, I don't know how to describe it like perfectly, but it resets the input on my TV. I have never seen a game do this before, and from what I can tell, it's a problem specifically with the PlayStation 2 version. But regardless, that means it really wigs with my capture card and I won't be able to capture the game myself. Well, time to get some footage off the internet. What you're seeing is the GameCube version though, so keep that in mind. This version is actually cool with being captured. Like, it goes to a party where like he didn't know there would be weed, and he's like, nah, I don't smoke, but you go right ahead, while the PS2 version is shaking in the corner, crying already on the phone with the police, and... Where, where was I? This time around, the story is that Gary dug up an old treasure chest, and inside that treasure chest is the Flying Dutchman. And according to the law of ghostliness or something, whoever discovers him must then become a member of his bloody crew. And look here, SpongeBob totally sells Gary out. It was not me who found you. Gary's the one who dug you up. I love how you could just see how pissed Gary is from just his expressions. Like, SpongeBob, what the fuck? That's one time where this game's janky animation actually works in its favor. Yeah, this game's presentation isn't that great. I mean, it's a 2001 PS2 game, so I can't be too hard on it. But if it looked good at the time, it certainly hasn't aged well. The colors feel really muted and washed out. Except for jellyfish fields, I guess they rounded up all the nice colors and put it over there. SpongeBob's eyes tend to freak out, the Flying Dutchman's fingers look like french fries, and Squidward and Patrick look like they're wearing black lipstick, like really cheap black lipstick. It seems I got the raw end of the stick in terms of presentation too, because the PS2's loading times are an eternity, and the frame rate is just garbo. And that doesn't seem to be the case for the GameCube version. Also, there's this guy. Don't you think your little friend Gary would like to play some fetch? Who are you and what have you done with the narrator? I get that sometimes voice actors can't be there for every role, especially for stuff like video games, but I don't get this one. The narrator in the show is voiced by Tom Kenny, who also voices SpongeBob, so I don't know why they got a different dude to voice it this time. In terms of how it plays, I mean, it's certainly better than Super Sponge, no doubt about that, but... I don't know, man, it's just kind of boring. Your goal for each stage is to collect every token that spells out the word SpongeBob. The pause menu very plainly tells you all the stuff you need to do to get all the tokens, and ugh, I just do not like the format for this. It seems really cheap and makes it feel like a bunch of chores. They even call it a to-do list in the menu, so... Ooh, excitement, I get to fill out a checklist. All right, so after you get all the tokens, we're teleported into SpongeBob's mind, which is filled with furniture, flying cars, and Patrick going ape shit, where we have to complete a simple slide puzzle. You know, I tried to say that like it was normal, so maybe it would feel normal. Didn't work. Okay, so I solved the puzzle. SpongeBob's dancing. His eyes are getting a divorce. What? Now I'm a hopping Harry? Uh, oh, okay, so SpongeBob's dressed like a treasure hunter, I think, and you have to use this stick to find one of the Dutchman's hidden treasures. A lack of so. The particle is going on in this game! That actually leads me to another mechanic of this game, which is the different outfits SpongeBob can wear. You can catch jellyfish with the fishing gear, throw water balls with the Mermaid Man costume, and blow shit around with the leaf blower. My favorite's the Mermaid Man costume because A, it's got great music, and B, it makes me feel cool doing all these mundane missions this game throws at you. Fear not, citizens, for I, Mermaid Man, shall use these acorns to plug holes in Sandy's tree dome, run atop a hamster wheel for 60 seconds, and deliver Krabby Patties in downtown Bikini Bottom. Very slowly, dude, this mission is ass. You just gotta take thing from point A to point B. One thing that's kind of cool is that, like, every house that you have to go to has its own address, and you can tell by the little sign next to the door, like, oh, that's a uh, seashell street, so I gotta find the right number, uh, the right seashell. That's kind of cool. Getting there, on the other hand, is just not fun. 
at all. Oh, and by the way, you move slower when you're holding an item. This is one of the first missions in the game too, so it leaves a pretty lame first impression. Well, regardless, I definitely like this one more than Super Sponge, and I did play this one as a kid as well, so there's always the nostalgia for playing it again. It doesn't entirely hold up well though. Y you see, a problem I had playing this is that I couldn't help but compare it to another game that came out a little later. Oh, what game am I talking about, you ask, while shoveling SpongeBob cereal into your maw? Am I perhaps talking about Battle for Bikini Bottom, aka the best SpongeBob game ever made? Finally, we get positive in this damn video. I loved this game as a kid, and you know what? I still fucking love this damn game. This time around, Plankton invented a whole bunch of Robo Boys to try to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Not bad, huh? But he accidentally set the switch on the machine to do not obey happens, so it's up to Spongebob and his friends to collect all the golden spatulas necessary, because what else would you need, to get back into the chum bucket and put it all to an end. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that this game is making a much greater effort to be funny. In the last two games, the dialogue was pretty much just setting up scenarios for missions and jams like that, but this game has jokes in a video game based on a comedy. And some of them are pretty fucking funny. Okay, is the magic wishing word? It used to be Alakazama Alabala Wisna Tikitana Fushbar Griddle Bits Von Wiedeschnauzer, but I kept forgetting it. On top of being funny, the fine fuckos at Heavy Iron Studios really refine just about everything from Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. The graphics are better, though the colors could still be brighter, and the gameplay changed from its awkward, mission-based fetch quests to a Mario 64-esque collect-a-thon platformer with tighter controls, a heavier emphasis on combat, and multiple playable characters. You got Spring Boob, who could do all the standard attacks, plus a few bubble-based special moves, Poot Rock, who can pick up heavy shit like melons and downed enemies, and Sunder, who could glide around, lasso enemies, and swing off a flying Texai. Yeah, that's the plural for Texas. I know grammar. My favorite to play as is Sandy, because pretty much everything she does is satisfying for her. Chop in, to glide in, and swing in. Oh, it's so good. Patrick and Sandy are only playable in certain stages made specifically for them. And you change characters at one of these here bus stops, which don't always make sense. How did this bus get on top of this skyscraper? Man. Technology's gone for. As I said before, this game is a pretty standard collectathon platformer that, admittedly, doesn't do a whole lot unique for the genre. But that doesn't make it any less fun. Your goal is to collect enough golden spatulas to unlock more levels and eventually reach the final boss. Sometimes you just find them, sometimes you gotta do little challenges, and sometimes you gotta do this. Just jump around like an idiot. That should at least make me smile. Okay, 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 just stop jumping, will you? If you take this golden spatula, will you please go away? <laughs> well, shit, all right, thanks, dude. You can also earn them by finding some of Patrick's lost socks hidden throughout the world, or by collecting enough shiny objects, yeah, that's what they're called, and giving them to Mr. Krabs in exchange for a spatula. Because you're gullible, I'm gonna help you out. And of course, make a small profit in return. Who are you and what have you done with Mr. Krabs? Again? All right, th that's fair. I'm sure Clancy Brown is an expensive man. You get a base this time battling bikini butts. One issue I had with Revenge of the Flying Dutchman was how much it spells out what you have to do to get each of the SpongeBob tokens. Battle for Bikini Bottom has a little more faith in their players as they give you little hints to make you figure out what you have to do for some of the more well-hidden golden spatulas. I mean, it's still not that hard. At the end of the day, this is still a kid's game. Sometimes you see one in the distance and wonder how you get to it. Sometimes you see one, know exactly how to get to it, but he have just a split second to react to- Whoa. I, I- I promise this doesn't normally happen. There are a few minor things I don't really like about this game, though. It doesn't happen a lot, but every now and again you notice that some platforms have attributes that aren't readily apparent by their look. Like, oops, I guess these platforms are slippery, and oh, I guess I'm surfing on this one. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of annoying sometimes. 
Also, another trope of this game being for kids, there are hint signs everywhere, and when you pass one for the first time, it stops the game and makes you read it. Sometimes it's just telling you something you could have easily guessed on your own, like how to jump, or that THIS IS GOD! Uh, oh wait, that says goo. Okay, but come on, it kind of looks like God, right? My biggest issue, though, is this. I think it had something to do with massaging my feet. Who are you and what have you done with the Mermaid Man? Okay, there's really no excuse for this. At least with the narrator's replacement in the last game and Mr. Krabs is in this one, they at least sounded all right. This Mermaid Man's voice sounds like he's continuously having his gonard squeezed. Joking aside, though, this game really is a great time tight controls, fun mechanics, and all that Spongebob charm that the last two games really lacked. So at the end of the day, you should avoid Super Sponge, consider Revenge of the Flying Dutchman if you can find the GameCube version for cheap, and definitely pick up Battle for Bikini Bottom if you like Spongebob and want a fun little platformer. Or a delicious sandwich. Hey buddy, how you doing? Do you like Facebook? I got one of those, link in the description. You like Twitter? I use that one even more link in the description. I've even got a Tumblr, and it's pretty great. You can ask me questions. Uh, guess where it is? Link in the description. And we got two more delicious videos right here that you can enjoy with your face. Thank you so much for watching this. I've actually wanted to make this video for literal years, so I hope it's worth it. Thank you. Subscribe. Stick around. I love you. Goodbye.